Thank you. A great question, and um, uh, it's one I've asked myself a lot because um, I do love it in the Senate, and, and it's not an easy decision to say, well, I'll set that aside to do this. Um, if you look at the Constitution, the Lieutenant Governor only has two responsibilities, to preside over the Senate 30 days, one year, 60 days, the next, and to fill in for the Governor when the Governor is unable to perform his duties or her duties because they're out of town or, or ill or whatever. That's not a lot of meat on the bones. So why are there, I think there are eight actually, two people are missing tonight, but uh, or just one's missing. So why are all these people seeking this job? And this is really, as you know, the only heavily contested race in this upcoming primary. And I think there's, there's a, a two-word answer to that, and that is Diane Dennis. And there's several facets to the answer. Diane Dennis has made something out of this job that was never there before. She really has, I mean, Roberto Mondragon was a wonderful lieutenant governor. He was our first full-time lieutenant governor. He was like the, the voice of La Gente in Santa Fe. He was terrific. But she has taken it to a whole new level. She has made it into a force within the administration. And when I decided to run for this, I asked her, would you be willing to let your lieutenant governor have that same kind of activist role within the administration? And she said yes. Now, she already has carved out pre-K, mortgage financing, payday lending, positive youth development as activities that she would continue to do. I asked her if she would be willing to let me do some of the things I'm interested in, and she said yes. And so that was why I was I'm seeking it out, to become the progressive voice within a Diane Danish administration. The issue before us is who best complements Diane Danish in, not, not duplicates, but complements Diane Danish in the new administration, and that's why I'm running for it. I think I do the best job of it.